Uh, an O'Reilly author and speaker at many of our conferences, spoke at the first Ignite on the myths of innovation, and now he's going to talk about attention and sex. <laughs> so uh, I have to confess that I love this format, and I am going to hack the shit out of it for the next five minutes. <laughs> so I have five stories for you. It's story time, so if you want to take a shot of whiskey or finish your beer, now's a good time to do so. My stories involve philosophy, a little bit about history, and then we'll get to the good parts of attention and hopefully sex. My first story, the Lincoln-Douglas debates, 1858. And I bring this up in this format where I have a decreasing amount of time going by every second because that format was organized as follows. First speaker got 60 minutes, 60 minutes to make his arguments. Second speaker got an hour and a half, hour and a half. Then the first guy got to go again for 30 minutes. They did this debate in different cities in Illinois. It was a senatorial race eight times. They did it eight different times. Now think of all the things they were able to cover in that debate. 1858, important time in American history. This is the history portion of the five minutes. The important time in American history, pre-Civil War, slavery, taxation, American West development. Lincoln and Douglas agreed that they both needed that amount of time to explore all the issues in depth at the proper level of examination, to deal with all the complexities and subtleties of the issues at hand. Thousands of people came to watch these events. My second story for you is modern day. Think of the last time you had an important issue at your workplace, in your family, in your local politics, national politics. How much time was available for people to present issues of complexity on the same level as what they had in 1858? Today we have much smaller amounts of time. The units of attention that we deal with are much, much smaller. Presidential debates often deal in minutes, minute and a half, rebuttals 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Commercials, uh, interview spots on television are in the minute to two minute range. Now, I will posit to you that uh, my, my third story, I won't posit yet, my third story is about Marshall McLuhan. Marshall McLuhan's a famous media theorist guy, and he, reads, he writes, wrote a lot of books that are really hard to read. So the stuff that I actually read and understood is as follows, this is my paraphrasing. Media isn't necessarily bad, but every media has strengths and weaknesses, and you have to, to be a consumer of them, you really need to understand their strengths and how, how they, the pro and con against each other. Every media, whether it's smoke signals, or text messaging, or emails, has certain kinds of information that it can possibly convey well. Then there's other kinds of information it can convey poorly. Then there's a third kind of information that it can't convey at all, and that's the dangerous one. That's the one that allows us to be victimized by media and by information, because we don't know what kinds of information we are not able to get. So my third story for you is about the distance between 1858 and today. That gap is accelerated by technology. The reason why people in 1858 were willing to spend six hours listening to two people debate politics compared to today has a lot to do with technology. Technology has allowed us to slice up time into these really small units, which makes it really attractive for us to want to manipulate them in the small. Multitasking is a predominant activity among many people in this room. Despite the fact, multitasking, <laughs> despite the fact that, despite the fact that we know all the research says you multitask, you lose. You cannot do complicated work in multitask fashion. So the fourth story I want to tell you is about things that are not divisible. Things that we still protect that we say you cannot multitask. The primarily, the, the one of primary importance is sex. That is where, thank you, thank you, you guys are all participating in sex, excellent, very good, very healthy. I'm sure our naturopath would agree that's a good activity. So that's an activity where we say you cannot verboten, turn your cell phone off, turn the TV off. We are focused on what we're doing, we are being intimate. The last thing I want to talk about is greatness and what greatness has to do with sex. That intimacy that we have when we are doing that activity is the same kind of intimacy that great masters in any field, Picasso, Hemingway, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, all those people are notable. We've tried to think of them because of their genius, but we really should think of them because of their mindfulness. They were protectors of their attention. They were able to focus their attention on the things that mattered most and protect themselves from all the distractions. That's how they achieved all the great things that they did. So my fifth and last story, maybe sixth, I haven't really been counting. My last story for you in any event has to do with you. And I offer it to you, if you're thinking about greatness, you want to achieve great things, you have heroes that you aspire to be like, pay attention to how they paid attention. And you'll find it's probably very different than what we are trained to do given all the technologies that are around us. So with that, I will leave you to think about how you use your attention, and I will thank you for giving me some of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott.
And we're going to take a break now. We'll be back on in about 20 minutes.